Well, good morning, everybody. I know we got kind of a thin group out here, but that's okay. I'll make these announcements either way. Uh, but anyway, I want to welcome everybody and uh, just say th- thank you for prioritizing being at church this morning on such a tough morning to be here. My name is Ben Glasgow. I'm, a, I'm an owner here at Crosswind, and we just want to welcome you here this morning and any first-time guests. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, you folks that are watching online, we want to uh, welcome you into the service as well. We may have more of you this morning as a result of the weather. Um, but if you're a first-time guest, we'd like for you to stop by the Welcome Center uh, and uh, visit with some volunteers and some staff that are out there, get any more information about the church that you might want on your way out today, feel free to stop by that out there in the front lobby uh, to connect with some of our volunteers. Uh, <clears throat> things that you can be aware of if you're, if you're new here, uh, Crosswind Kids is down this orange hallway. We've got volunteers back here in the back that would love to, uh, to talk to Jesus, on, uh, talk to your children about Jesus on their level. Um, babies through age uh, fifth grade. So any, any child is welcome. Just go down this orange hallway, and we would love to, uh, to meet them there. Uh, the mom room that we have for you mothers that may have infants in the, uh, in the service, if you'd like some special time uh, here in the auditorium, just go back here to the mom room and have a seat and take care of your baby as you need, and then you can come right back out uh, here as you, as you see fit. Uh, If you're looking to connect more with staff about uh, prayer requests, things that uh, come up during the service as as you're getting fed the word today, uh, we have what we call a starting point room back here uh, in the back of the auditorium as well. Uh, And uh, our staff is prepared after the service to meet you back there, answer questions, pray with you, uh, take care of whatever needs you possibly might have. Uh, Please feel free to jump back there uh, in the starting point room and, and visit with our staff. After, uh, after the service. Uh, if you'd like to give this morning, we have three ways to give. You can give in our wooden boxes around the auditorium. You can also give on our website, or you can give on the Crosswind app if you would like to do so that way. Uh, we're right now in the process of nominating elders. Um, the term elder for our church is uh, primarily our church leadership uh, team. And so uh, we're in the process of nominating elders uh, to take uh, uh, over leadership roles. And if you'd like to submit a name to be an elder uh, here at Crosswind Church, uh, please prayerfully consider who that might be uh, as you consider who you might want to nominate as an elder. Obviously, that's optional. Uh, Then if you do have somebody that you've prayerfully considered and you would like to nominate them, uh, go to our church app uh, and click Connect and then fill out the form, uh, and the church will receive that and consider your nomination. So uh, if you would like to do so, um, your, uh, your opinion is certainly important to the church, and we would like to hear from you if you have somebody in mind. So uh, with all that said, uh, those are the announcements. We're so glad you're here once again, and please stand and worship with us.
I'm so glad God wants to do new things in us this morning, right? A new song for a new day rises up in me. Every time I think about how you set me free, static breeze pours out from my mouth into the sky. Standing all of you got because you changed my life. Oh, your fame is for your faithfulness, amazing your love. Always good and ready to receive. Oh, your kindness is astounding, God. You keep your promises. Oh, blessing after blessing comes to those who trust in you. Oh, blessing after blessing comes to those who trust in you. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. I've seen your miracles, your wonderful words Show me just a glimpse of the heaven on earth Oh, my endless praise pours out for the things that you've done I could spend a lifetime, God, and never thank you enough Oh, your fame is for your, your faithfulness, faithfulness Amazing you love Thank you, Lord Always good and ready to receive. Oh, God, this is astounding, God. You keep your promises. Oh, blessing after blessing comes to those who trust in you. Blessing after blessing comes to those who trust in you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, oh Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, Lord, my God, there's no one like you. Oh, your fame is for your faithfulness, amazing in your love. Always good and ready to receive. Oh, your kindness is astounding, God. Keep your promises. Oh, blessing after blessing comes to those who trust in you. Oh, your fame is for your, your faithfulness. Amazing your love. Always good and ready to receive. Oh, your kindness is astounding, God. To keep your promises. And blessing after blessing comes. To those who trust in you, a blessing after a blessing comes. To those who trust in you, a blessing after a blessing comes. To those who trust in you. Whoa, oh, oh. Whoa, oh. All right, we're, we're few, but we're strong <laughs> this morning. Hey, last week, uh, Kyle introduced a new song called House of the Lord, and I can't wait to play it uh, this morning with you. Open the prison doors, he 
parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is joy in this place. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. So, oh, oh, oh. We sing. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave And my God was still rolling stones away Do you believe it? There's joy in the house of the Lord There's joy in the house of the Lord today And we won't be quiet Oh, we shout out your praise There's joy in the house of the Lord Our God is surely in this place And we won't be quiet Oh, we shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. Cause we were the beggars, and now we're royalty. We were the prisoners, and now we're running free. Oh, we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars, oh, we were the beggars. Now we're royalty, oh, we were the prisoners. Now we're running free, oh, we are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. Come on, somebody. Hey, there's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. Oh, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today, and we won't be quiet. Oh, we, we shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. Oh, we'll shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise. Oh, oh, oh. We shout out your praise, oh, oh. We shout out your praise, Lord. Amen. I feel like you can't sing that song if you're not smiling, so if you didn't smile, maybe next week is your week. I want to introduce another new song to you, and uh, this one is a song I've been singing for for quite some time now, but every year, uh, I don't know exactly when this trend started, but somewhere down the line, people thought it was a great idea just to have a word for the year, and so that became instantly popular on Instagram and Facebook as everyone follows what everyone does on social media just blindly. Um, There's nothing wrong with having a name or a, a word for your year, but there's a name that is greater than any other name. <laughs> There's a, a name that's greater than any other word you could put on your year, and that's the name of Jesus. And I believe that that is the name that we should celebrate. That's the name that we should target. That's the name that we should bow down to and worship and sing to. And so this song is called I Speak Jesus. And maybe you're in a situation where you're speaking a word over your year because you're in a bad situation and you're trying to overcome that. Rather than just asking for endurance, why don't you ask for Jesus this morning? I 
I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind because I know there's peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak Jesus because your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every strong break every strong shine through the shadows burn like a fire I just want to speak the name of Jesus over fear and all anxiety to every soul held captive by depression I speak Jesus your name is power your name is power your name is healing your name is life break every stronghold in this place break every stronghold shine through the shadows and burn like fire shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets Oh, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy. And Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Shout Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains. And Jesus in the streets. Jesus in the darkness over every enemy Jesus for my family I speak the whole name of Jesus Oh, shout Jesus from the mountains Jesus in the streets Jesus in the darkness over every Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. Your name is power, Lord. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Break every stronghold. Shout through the shadows, burn like a fire. Your name is power. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. It's only Jesus, only Jesus. Break every stronghold, shine through the shadows. Burn like a fire. I just want to speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. And because I know there's peace within your presence, I speak Jesus.
Jesus, be all. Be everything in our lives. Nothing else.
calls me home here in the power of Christ I'll stay oh here in the power of Christ I'll stay Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family. I speak the holy name of Jesus, Jesus. Shout Jesus from the mountains and Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the darkness over every enemy, and Jesus for my family, I speak the holy name of Jesus. today. May it only be Jesus tomorrow. May it only be Jesus 10 years down the road. May it only be Jesus as our children and have children and our children's children have children. God, may it be only Jesus for generations after generations. Start here with us. Start here with us, regardless of the pain, regardless of how it hurts regardless of the sacrifices we have to make, God, call us to greater things so that we can see more of you. Thank you, Lord, for being here today. Thank you for ministering to us. Thank you for loving us so well. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Hey, everybody. It's good to see all of you guys uh, here in the room today. It's also great to have those of you who are watching and listening online with us as well. It's always uh, good to have both sets of crowds uh, here today, uh, especially if you're a guest, though. Whether, again, whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, it's always good to have you guys. And we always want to point that out and honor you guys that you've taken time out of your weekend, out of your Sunday morning to be here with us. So if you're a guest here today, we welcome you. Um, it is such an honor for you to be here. My name is Garrett, uh, for those of you who may not know, and I hate cutting my toenails. Anybody else? Like, can we, just, can we just be real, right? A little smaller crowd this morning. Can we just be real? Just slip the hand up if that's you. I, I won't tell nobody. I just, like, I absolutely, out of the list of hygiene things that I do, that is at the very bottom 
of the list. Now, I don't know why, it just, it, it, it just is. And so like, here's like a routine of mine, um, is like, I know that I need to do that, right? Like, you know, you take your socks off and you look down and you're like, yeah, I, I should do that. And you think, okay, I'll, I'll do it tomorrow. Like, this, this is what I do. I don't know about you guys, maybe you do this every day. But like, I, I'll do it tomorrow, right? Like, I can put it off another day, right? Like, that's good. Um, and then usually three or four days go by uh, and they're like, oh, I, need to, I, I really need to do that. Eventually, there comes a point in my life where I will come home and I will take my shoes off, and my toenail is sticking through my sock, that's usually the point where I'm like, all right, i got to stop everything. i go to the bathroom and find the clippers. And whenever my toenails go from toenails to talons, it's usually the place where I decide I've got to do something about this. Like, I, I, I just think, I hope, maybe I'm the only one. Y'all are laughing a little too hard, so I'll probably I'm the only one. Okay, anyway. Um, that's me, so welcome to church. Um, but, like, that's just something that I know that I, I've got to do more often. Uh, but it's just one of those things where I just, uh, every once in a while, is, is just fine, right? And, and maybe you've got something uh, similar that, that fits into that category of, I should probably do that more often, but it's really over here in that, in that, thing, that list, that category of every once in a while, right? And maybe it's, maybe it's not hygiene for you. Maybe it's something a little bit, uh, a little bit more personal. Maybe there's uh, a relationship that you need to take care of. You need to call somebody. You need to uh, tell them that you care about them. You love them. You need to check up on them. You do it every once in a while, but maybe uh, 2022 is offering you a, a, a chance, an opportunity, an opportunity for you to do it a little bit more often. Maybe there's something uh, in your professional world, whether it's experience, whether it's education, you're doing uh, every once in a while, right? There's this one thing that you should take care of, it, but maybe maybe this year it, it could be on that, uh, we could change it and put it on the, the different list of, of doing more often. Maybe it's in your finances, right? There, I should probably make a budget. I should probably take care of these things. I'm doing it every once in a while, right? Every couple months, but maybe, perhaps, um, I should uh, look at doing it a little bit more often. And so if we were to sit here and evaluate our lives and, and look through the different things that are going on in our world, there's probably a few things, if not um, a lot of things, that we could probably shift into uh, a different category. And so uh, today, as we kind of move on into this series that we, we started last week, for those of you who weren't here, uh, we started a new series, as you saw from the video, uh, that we've entitled Progress. Um, and if we were to pass the mic, if we would ask those of you online and to type in a definition on the chat, uh, what progress means for you? What does it look like uh, in your family? What does it look like if you were to go to work tomorrow or on Tuesday? What would it look like for your boss to come in and say, hey, tell me what progress is? When you're sitting in the job interview, what is progress? to you, and out of all the definitions that we could use, and I would probably say that they would all be fairly relative and fairly correct in definitions, the one that we've used, I came across in a book that I'm reading, uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. For those of you who've read that book, you've probably seen this definition in his book. Uh, some of you have re uh, read or watched Chronicles of Narnia. You know a little bit about C.S. Lewis. But this is what he says about progress. Progress means not just changing but changing for the better. And so using this definition to make sure everybody's on the same page of what we're looking at uh, in, in regards to progress, we're not just talking about changing, right? We're not just talking about stopping one behavior or adjusting our attitudes. No, we're talking about changing something in our lives, changing uh, and, and making sure that when we do change, when we are changing, when we decide to do whatever it is that we're going to change in life, it's for the better. And so last week we kind of talked about what that looks like in regards to the church, why we show up to church, why we come to church, and the gathering and the importance and in, the, in, in making sure that we put um, a significance on gathering together as the people of God, as the body of Christ, as fellow and followers of Jesus. And so that's what last week looked like. And so today as we move on, we're going to continue to look back into Acts chapter 2 and the story that we read uh, last week where we see the very first followers of Jesus have to figure out what to do. Right, So Peter stands up and preaches his very first sermon ever, and 3,000 people get saved. Right, 3,000 people decide they're going to put their faith in Jesus, and so the church goes from 120 people to 3,120 people, and now they have to figure out what to do. And so as we read this story last week in Acts chapter 2, the very last section, we saw that these very first followers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, and to prayer, and to showing up, and, and gathering together, and, and, and breaking of bread, doing communion, what we know as the Last Supper, these kinds of things. And within doing that, Luke, the writer, uh, the author of Acts, tells us that some amazing things happen. Right? Verse 45 says that they, being these very first followers of Jesus, they would take care of one another in, a, in such ways that they would sell property, they would sell possessions so that if anybody had a need, it would be taken care of. 
He goes on to say later on in just, a, in just a, the next verse or two verses later, he says that the people were, were gathering together, they were praising God in the temple courts regularly is what to do, and the people, not the very first followers of Jesus, but the, but the people granted these very first followers of Jesus, they granted them favor. And they gained favor within the communities. They gained favor where they went throughout the week. As we said last week, we gathered to scatter. Wherever they went, wherever they scattered after they gathered together in their houses and the places where they met, they would gain favor with the people. The people in the marketplaces, the people in their communities, the people at their jobs, the day-to-day tasks that they were going about, they gained favor with the people. And the last thing that Luke says, and what we know is chapter 2, is that the Lord added to their number daily. Hence, what we know today as the launch, the startup of church. Now, as we look at these verses, as we look at this just few little uh, verses of, of, of just a, kind of a glimpse into the very first century church and the very first followers of Jesus, Luke doesn't say this. But there's this sense of taking care of one another, right? In verse 45, he talks about, you know, if anybody had a need, and then there's favor found among the people. But there's this thing that we say in our church world. There's this thing that we do within the church world. It's not specifically stated here, but in a few moments, we'll look at New Testament authors who actually talk about this. But there's this idea with this very first group of followers that they were going to serve one another. They were going to take care of one another, so much so that they would rid themselves of property, they would rid themselves of possessions that they weren't using, so much so that they could take care of another follower of Jesus. And in doing so, I would argue they were probably imitating the very Christ that they put their faith in. In imitating him, not only did they take care of one another within the group, but as they went out into their communities and their marketplaces and the jobs and the homes and the places that they went, as they scattered, they would serve other people and take care of other people the same way that they were taking care of one another, the same way that they heard Christ doing to other people, imitating Christ. They would take that mentality into the marketplaces and the communities and they would serve others. And the very last thing, again, that Luke tells us is that the Lord added to their number daily. Now, I can't confirm this because it's not in Scripture, but I kind of have this idea, I kind of have this thinking that maybe they didn't go into the the places that they were supposed to go and just preach all the time. They might have. Some of them might have felt comfortable enough preaching and talking about how Jesus was resurrected from the dead and now we can put our faith and trust and hope in him. But I just happen to believe that the majority of them who had no authority, who probably didn't feel educated enough, who probably didn't have enough experience to be comfortable in standing up on a, in, a, in, a, in a job or in a marketplace or somewhere and talking about Jesus, what did they probably do? They probably served one another. They probably were kind to others. They were probably compassionate and they provided grace and mercy the same way that the very first apostles showed them. The same way that Christ showed the, his apostles. So much so, there's this kind of like this assembly line of, of, of I'm doing what this person did to me and this person was done because he spent three or four years with Jesus. And so what would it look like As we talk about progress, as we talk about what it looks like to be better within the church, not only just showing up on a Sunday morning, but also in the scatterings in which we go, what would it look like to be better at serving? Now, I grew up in the church, as I've I've said before, and I kind of feel like I I can say this, uh, and for those of you who grew up in church, you you probably would agree that we're really good at serving every once in a while, right? Right? When the church orchestrates something, when the church programs something, when the church puts something together and tells me I can show up at a convenient time on a convenient date, that I'll show up and I'll serve. And Crossland Church is wonderful at this, right? We do amazing things in partnership with nonprofits and other ministries, and you guys show up. And that's wonderful. And on the large, grand scale of things, that is so awesome. It takes an army, right? Like, we understand that people are going to show up across the church. If we provide an opportunity, people are going to show up. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. But when you look at this story in Acts chapter 2, we just see the people. We can just assume that the people went out as they scattered and served on probably the smallest on perhaps the most simple of scales. So much so 
that people around them granted them favor. And because of that, I'm just crazy enough to believe that perhaps the person being kind, the person serving, the person putting their uh, own needs beneath or to the side of others' needs, perhaps that person was bold enough to say, hey, you want to know why I do this? Come over to this house tonight. Let, let me, let me, let me, let me, I want you to be a part of a conversation, right? There's, there's this man by the name of Peter or Matthew or John, or James, or, or, or Bartholomew, or there's these guys who spent time with Jesus. You remember Jesus, these people that they, that they thought this guy was crazy, he was a carpenter up from north, and they said he was a Messiah, but then, but then he died, and everybody thought, well, oh well. But then, these men, these 120, these men, these women saw him after he died. And here's the crazy part. Once you die, you're supposed to stay dead. But these men and these women, they saw him, and they're teaching that he is the way and the truth of life. Hey, I know I've been kind to you. I know I've helped you. I know, but hey, I want you to come. I want you to come over to this house tonight. I want, I, want, I want you to hear what God is doing through his son, Jesus. And as we've said, Luke records that the Lord added to their number daily. What if we took this idea? What if we took this principle from the very first followers of Jesus, the very first century, and moved it into the 21st century and served others on the simplest, on the smallest scale? When it's not advertised, when it's not live streamed, when no one else knows about it but you and the person that you're doing it to, what would that look like? Would you be granted favor with that person or that group of people? Would a relationship, would a connection, would a friendship be established so that you could have a conversation with that person or with that group of people at work, at school, at the universities, at, in, in the aisles at Walmart or wherever it is that you go say, hey, this isn't about me. I want to invite you to come to church. I want to invite you to my home group. I want to invite you to understand what Jesus really is. What would that look like today? And even though Luke doesn't say it, even though he doesn't actually use the word serve, I just happen to believe that this is what these very first followers did. So much so that just because Luke doesn't write about it, when you look at other New Testament authors, you see they can't help but talk about serving one another. You can't, you, you can't read one of the, the letters of Paul or Peter's letters or James or John, some of these other guys that we talk about when we read their, uh, their documents and their, let, their letters, that you see that these guys were serious about this. So much so, Peter, the guy that literally just preached and 3,000 people began to follow Jesus that day. Peter, later on in life, he writes a letter. It's super, uh, super easy. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of his letters. We don't really know, but it's what we call 1 Peter, right? The very back part of your Bibles. 1 Peter. Peter writes to what he says in the very opening part of his letter. He actually writes to a scattered, persecuted church. He actually writes to scattered, fo scattered followers of Jesus. And in his letter, what we know is chapter 4, verse 10, he says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. In other words, whatever you're good at, whatever you're doing in and out of your week, right, you should do that. You should use that gift, that talent, that education, that experience to literally serve other people. Peter, the guy that would deny Christ, the guy that would run to an empty tomb and see the body of Jesus not there, the guy that had breakfast with Jesus on a beach, he writes this, whatever gift, whatever you're good at, whatever you're doing, as you scatter through your week, you're to serve other people. Now that's one. I can't just give you one because they talk all throughout the New Testament. John, another apostle of Jesus, another one that saw an empty tomb. John would actually point out that he actually outran Peter. You got that friend that always one-ups you? This is John, right? First John chapter 3, he says this. What we know is chapter 3, John says this. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and our sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, folks reading the letter, family, friends, anyone who is reading my words, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. 
wouldn't it be awesome if Crosswind Church wasn't just about Sunday songs and sermons? Wouldn't it be awesome that Crosswind Church, yes, put a priority on gathering, showed up to gather and experience the presence of God and and literally worship Him, be taught the Word of God, apply the Word of God in their lives as they scatter out into wherever they're going to go Monday through Saturday. And in doing so, we served one another, not just in the the words, not just in the posts on social media, not just in the things that we should do, but actually we served others in action. Another New Testament author, James, now, not John's brother James, but the brother of Jesus James. All right, so think about that for a second. The actual brother of Jesus writes this. He actually takes his whole material possessions and things to a whole nother level. James would write this. Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm, well fed, and does nothing but about their physical needs, what good is it? And in the same way, faith by itself if not accompanied by action, is dead. James 2.17, probably the most famous verse in his letter. We might know it this way. James, faith without action is dead. Right? He takes it to a whole other level. Right? And he, and he knows. <laughs> What's amazing, he knows in the first century what we do in the first century. I'll pray for you. God bless. Right? That's what we do. But serving others... In reality, in action, in the gifts and the talents and the education and the experience that we're literally in Monday through Saturday. James says, if you don't do these things, your faith is absolutely worthless. All right, I might have paraphrased that a little bit. James actually says dead. I actually said absolutely worthless, right? Like, there is a compelling nature to this faith. There is something that if you've been experienced, if you've been extended grace and mercy and truth and love and forgiveness in a real and a radical way, then you are to do the exact same thing that Christ has done to you. And guess what? It feels all good on Sunday, right? Right? We, we sing it. Joy in the house of the Lord. Amen, right? That feels good. And we read, read these words, right? We, we've, maybe we've got some of these verses memorized and things like that. But then as we talked about last week, eventually there's going to come a time where we're going to say amen. And you're going to go get your kids. And you're going to get in your cars and you're going to scatter somewhere. And that's where we're, in our society, we say that's where the rubber meets the road. That's where your faith actually takes off. That's where you're provided an opportunity You're provided a way to take your faith to the next level. You're provided an opportunity, a moment, a decision where you get to serve like Christ. And you get to love like Christ. And you get to care like Christ. And have compassion and grace like Christ. There's one more. He's kind of late to the scene because... Um, instead of following Christ at first, he's, he's trying to kill him. But anyway, there's this guy uh, by the name of Saul of Tarsus. He's a latecomer to the scene, but he's made it his mission in his first century life to eradicate the church, to actually persecute the church. Well, eventually he has this, uh, this moment, this, this event in his life where he actually encounters the resurrected Christ. And it's so powerful that he immediately goes to preaching Jesus and not persecuting the church, but actually planting churches. And so the New Testament is full, half, if not a little more, of his letters to churches where he encourages, he inspires, he, he tells folks, this is what you are to do. And one of his letters to a church at Philippi, we know it as the letter to, of, 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 of Philippians, he would say this in chapter 2. Do nothing out of selfish ambition Or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interest of others. Now, now, let's just be real, right? Like, for most of us, if not all of us, because I haven't asked all of you, I'm just assuming. Like, as Americans, that's hard. Because our society, our culture, our patriotism or whatever it is, our nationalism, whatever it is, it says that you are to look out for yourself. And you are are to take care of you. If you want to be successful, you are to do this, that, and the other. And that way you succeed. And you are taken care of. And you do you. And you find whatever makes you happy. You, 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 you. Right? But 
whereas culture is saying, you know, take care of yourself, Jesus tells his church to lose yourself. And in losing yourself, you find him. And in him is the way and the truth and the life. Paul would go on in that very same chapter. He says, in, in all of your relationships, have the same mindset as Christ. I just wonder when Luke tells us that these very first followers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Right? We're going to talk about this in a couple weeks, but I just wonder what exactly that looked like. Right, like I, I know I've, I've said this before about teaching the Word of God. Like you know, there are things that we read, and, and as we've said before, you know, you have to read what the Bible says or what the author says and what the author doesn't say. Right, but also when you read these passages about, hey, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. I just happen, my mind just happens to wonder, what did they, what did they say? What did they teach? What story that's probably recorded in the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John's account, I wonder what story they actually told. Did they tell all the stories? Did they, did they remember Peter telling Mark uh, where, where there was this conflict between James and John and one wanted to be on the right side of Jesus when Jesus got his throne and his crown, right? Because they were thinking the monarch, they were thinking King Jesus physically in Jerusalem. There was this, there was this uh, tension within the discipleship uh, of like that James wanted to be on one side and John on the other. And, and Mark actually says that the apostles were indignant of James and John, meaning they were frustrated. They were annoyed that they were having this conversation. In the famous words of Jesus, I wonder if the apostles taught this. In Mark chapter 10, Jesus says, the Son of Man, referring to himself, I didn't come to be served. I came to serve and to give my life for many. I don't know what all they taught, but I just happened to wonder as the very first followers of Jesus were going out into their communities and going out into the places where they would scatter to. I just wonder if they, they were told the stories of how Jesus served others and cared for others and loved others like nobody had ever done before. You know, this weekend, um, specifically here in the States, probably all around the world, but specifically here in the States, um, our country will honor, uh, remember the, the legacy of, of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, and, and to paraphrase uh, him a little bit, Dr. King once said that anybody uh, can be great. Why? Well, he says anybody can serve. He would go on and be quoted in, in saying that life's most persistent and urgent question is this what are you doing for others so today as we sit here and we talk about what it looks like to pro to have progress in our lives what does it look like to be better right what does it look like within the church what does it look like as a follower of Jesus to be better could i just could I just throw this idea out there that maybe it would look like this idea of serving, moving from the list, the category, the, this space of every once in a while to more often. What would it look like for us at Crosswind Church as followers of Jesus going in and out our week, in and out our jobs, in and out of our schools and the things that we have to do this coming week? What would it look like to find, to look for, to, to seek out opportunities to serve others on not the grand scale of things, not on the massive event that everybody's going to RSVP to, no, 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 not that. I'm talking about on the most simple and the smallest scale, where again, no one's going to see it, maybe besides you and that person and God himself. What would it look like at your job? For no other reason, you just show up with coffee, show up with donuts, show up with McDonald's, show up with whatever. What would it look like just to serve your coworkers? What would it look like to serve the coworkers that you don't like? Let's talk about that for a second. It's easy to bring your best friend something to eat. 
It's easy to bring that coworker that's right beside you. You've been there. You've been going through all this kind of stuff. They know you know all that kind of stuff. What would it look like to serve the one that you don't like? What would it look like to serve the boss? Bosses, what would it look like to serve that employee that doesn't bring in the numbers that everybody else brings? What would it look like in our own relationships with one another to serve one another? I've heard uh, Jeremy, our lead pastor, I've heard him say this about marriage. Marriage is about getting to the back of the line. It's about serving one another. It is a race to the back of the line. Spouses, what would it look like to serve our spouse this week? What would it look like if you did something that she normally does? What would it look like if you did something that he normally does? What would it look like, again, on the most simple and the smallest scale of things to serve other people this week? There are so many opportunities. And again, I think we're all probably guilty of this. And we just simply miss. Because we have, we have one thing on our mind. We've got this on our mind. We've got to do this. Our kids are going to have it. All these things. But today, as we talk about serving, we think through this idea of serving other people. The same way that perhaps the very first followers of Jesus had to do too. To be better. To see progress in our very own lives. What if we looked at opportunities? What if we sought out ways to serve others this week? Again, that nobody else is doing. What would that look like for us? I think it would change the places that we would work. I think it would change the relationships we have at school. I think it would impact our community. So much so that perhaps, maybe even, the same thing that was said in Acts chapter 2 about the people granting them favor, perhaps that could be said about us. Oh, wouldn't that be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing to invite some people who desperately need to hear more about Jesus to church, to group, to Bible study? What would it look like this week for you as a follower of Jesus to seek out the most simple Small way of serving other people. Now, that's individually. Collectively, let's do something else. Last week, I asked you to pull out your phone. Um, for those of you who had alarms, and we talked about setting our alarms and things like that. Uh, this week, I want you to pull out your phones if you'd like, because um, I want you to look at your calendar. One of the uh, things that we talk about here at Crosswind Church quite a bit are wins. This is just ways that we can celebrate um, things that are going on in each other's lives, um, in a home group's life, in a ministry's life. And we celebrate these things. We talk about them with our volunteers. We talk about it at staff meetings. All these things that we can just kind of celebrate. And one of the things as we looked at uh, last year, uh, 2021, uh, a win, a big win for us was a way in which um, our kids' ministry spearheaded a serve opportunity. So in November, our community does this thing called Feeding of the 5,000. Um, we give groceries away, right? Like we're the sweet potato church, so you brought sweet potatoes. And, and, and we give groceries away, and we serve um, a Thanksgiving meal, and we just show up um, in a real and a radical way in our community. And so um, there was an opportunity so, uh, for us to pack grocery bags. Uh, that was coming up. And so Courtney and our kids ministry team, they kind of spearhead an opportunity for families to show up and serve. Um, and it was a huge deal, right? Because what happens is people just devoted an hour to show up and give of themselves, serve other people that they would never meet, that these people would probably never be able to give back to them. But it was just a way for us collectively as a church to serve other people. Well, for those of you who, are, who were around um, in the fall of last year, you know part of our Be Rich uh, opportunities, one of our Be Rich nonprofits that we were able to give to was the Bridge of Northwest Tennessee. They purchased a warehouse back in the summer, and we just wanted to partner with them, help them go further faster. And so if you remember that, Be Rich, we gave almost 24, or you guys gave almost $24,000, and we in turn gave that away to the community. One of the, camp, one of the ministries that we gave to was the Bridge, right? And what was really cool about showing up and giving them money was we asked them a simple question. What would it look like in 2022... If instead of Crosswind Church just showing up and giving you a check, which they were so grateful for, by the way, but like, what would it look like instead of just showing up with a check, we showed up with some volunteers. 
We showed up with no other agenda but to serve the bridge. Their faces lit up. They were ecstatic. They were like, we would love that. We've got so many opportunities we could put together this, that, and the other. We're like, whoa, hold up, time out. Like, let's not get crazy, all right? Like, we got jobs, we got families, like, we got to figure this out. And so what we told them was, look, we're thinking one Sunday afternoon, an hour, maybe two at max, all right? We got lives too, right? All right? And so what would it look like if Crosswind Church just showed up and served? And so last week or a week before one, we reached out uh, to Julie Huggins over there at the bridge of Northwest Tennessee, and they said, we've got it. We've got a massive sale that's going on within the warehouse. They've created this thrift store um, uh, within this warehouse. They're wanting to just minister to people, not trying to make profit, just trying to minister to people in need. And so they sell clothes and toys I'm just for like quarters, like super dirt cheap. And so they've got a big sale coming up in February. So I've talked so much, I put my phone up. But um, on January, Sunday, January the 30th, this is where I want you to have your phones out. On Sunday, January the 30th, from 3 to 5, we're asking Crosswind Church to show up and serve. Now, this is on a large, grand scale, right? This is on the scale where everybody shows up and we celebrate collectively in the body of Christ. used to be the hand and feet in Jesus. It's awesome, right? This is the opportunity where, where if you're kind of, well, I don't know about serving my coworkers. Like, they're jerks, and I want out of there, and I'm looking for another job. Or I don't know if I can serve those employees. They're not doing, okay, okay, all right. So you can't do that. You're not there yet. You can't do that simple, individual, small step of serving. Cool. What would it look like for you to partner with us? What would it look like for you to show up with other followers of Jesus and serve? What would that look like? What would that look like to get the home group together, some friends together, some families together, and just serve? We're going to give you that opportunity. I hope you look for an opportunity this week to serve others in a real and a radical way. But if you don't, or you want to hold off in a couple weeks, in two weeks from today, we'll talk more about this in the Sundays to come. But in two weeks, we're going to provide you an opportunity to serve on a grand scale, on a large scale, so that Crosswind Church makes a difference within our community. Why? We believe life with Jesus is better. We have a desire to desperately make sure that people in our community, whether they come into Crosswind Church, whether it's one of the services, whether their kids show up, whether their students show up, regardless, we desperately want to make sure that Jesus is made famous in Northwest Tennessee, the Southwest Kentucky. I'm so excited about what God's going to do in and through our church, what he's already done and what the rest of 2022 holds. But could it be for some of us it needs to start not with showing up on Sunday because most of us probably do that anyway. And that's kind of already in our routine and our schedules and our calendar. But what would it look like to give up of ourselves? What would it look like to value others and put their interest above our own? It's tough, but for many of us it's probably a next step we need to take. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all of the love and the grace and the mercy and the things that you have extended to us so that now, as recipients of that, we can now extend out to our community and to our loved ones and to our friends and coworkers and other people that we're going to encounter as we scatter this week. Father, I pray for all of us to take uh, a quick evaluation of ourselves. We probably could all say that we need to serve a little more, and that's okay. Because this week, we're all going to take that next step into trying to figure out what that looks like. Seeking out opportunities to serve other people in just simple, small ways. And God, I'm praying right here, right now, whether they're here in this room, they're watching, they're listening online, whatever the case may be. God, I, provide, I pray that you would provide an opportunity for every single person to serve somebody else this week. God, help us in that matter. Help us, show us, and all of these things, God, we literally want to show what it looks like to be a follower of Jesus. God, help us all make progress in this area. Help us all to become better in our walk with you. And God, you're going to get the praise, and you're going to get the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody at Crosswind Church said, amen. You guys have a great, 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 great week.